let us look at this equation. The equation is solve the differential equation x squared dy plus y times x plus y dx is equal to 0. And the initial condition is y is equal to 1 when x is equal to 1. <coughs> now I worked this example out. This is a very lengthy example. So I wanted to save time and also not do uh, mistakes. Okay, so the first step. So the first step is I've written the question again. X square the same question and then I have taken this to the other side. So what will happen? Uh, then writing dy by dx. Uh, I hope this step is clear. So minus and then I've taken uh, taken y inside. So this becomes x xy plus y squared over xy x squared. So in other words, dx you're dividing both sides by dx and also dividing both sides by x squared. So this is till this step is not that difficult. Okay. Now, what I've done is I've divided both the numerator by x squared. So it is x y over x squared plus y squared over x squared. Okay, so what happens is one of the x's gets cancelled. <coughs> so x and one of the x gets cancelled. So this is y over x plus y over x the whole squared. Okay, now this is called a homogeneous differential equation because the numerator is a function uh, of degree 2 and this is also a function of degree 2 and whenever you have this type of uh, differential equation it's called a homogeneous differential equation okay so not going into much detail uh, this simplifies to y over x plus y over x the whole squared now we're going to do a substitution which is very crucial so we are letting y over x as v so y is equal to vx. Okay. Now we are going to differentiate both sides with respect to x or I'm using the differential or uh, the derivative operator to both sides. So d by dx of y is equal to d by dx of vx. So d by dx, <coughs> excuse me, d by dx of y is nothing but dy by dx. And now I'm using the chain rule. So d by dx of v times the second variable plus d by dx of the second variable times the first variable. So this is the chain rule. Okay, so this is d by uh, d by dx of y would be dy by dx and d by dx of v would be dv by dx. And here d by dx of x is 1. So this is d by dx of x is 1. So this is 1 times v. So this changes to dy by dx is x times dv by dx plus v. Okay, so we have got two substitutions. So I have named this as 1, this as 1, the initial substitution as 1, and this as 2. So we are substituting 1 and 2 in a. So I have written a again. This was an a form. This was a, which is dy by dx is minus y by x plus y by x the whole squared. Okay, so in place of in place of dy by dx, I can put this form. That is, that's what I've done. X times dv by dx plus v is equal to this is v and this is v squared. Okay, so this is simple algebra. So I'm moving this to the other side. So this is minus v, minus v squared, and this went to the other side, or you're taking away v from both sides. So this simplifies to minus v squared minus 2v. Okay, so now you have got, now both of, in the next step, I multiplied both sides with negative 1. So if you multiply this by negative 1, it also multiply this side by negative 1, because I don't like both these negatives. So this becomes v squared plus v, 2v and this side becomes minus x dv by dx okay so now separating the variables or arranging the differential along with the variables so this is this uh, I hope you understand this step uh, so this is minus 
1 over. So in other words, what has happened is this has gone down and this negative x has gone here. I hope this step is not that difficult. So this is v squared plus 2v came down and minus x went down and this also went up. I hope you can see this. This went down and this came down. Okay, I hope I've not confused you more. So this is 1 over v squared plus 2v dv is equal to negative 1 over x dx. Okay, now to do the, in, now we are integrating both sides, so this is not difficult. Now, I'll, to differentiate this, uh, there's a formula. So let me show you the formula. So this is uh, to make it a perfect square. I've added 1 and then taken away 1. So this becomes... Uh, one over, integration of 1 over v plus 1 the whole squared minus 1 squared. And this is integration of 1 over x is natural log of x. Now I have made a video on this. So you can refer, if you go to this link, you can see uh, the, okay, so this, I have made a mistake here. So the integration of 1 over 1, the integration of 1 over x squared minus a squared dx is 1 over 2a times natural log of x minus a over x plus a. You can see this link uh, to watch this video. Or I have uh, done the integration. I've shown you how I have, how we can reach the result here. Yeah, if you don't want to uh, watch the video, this is uh, using difference of two squares. This becomes 1 over v. Uh, times v plus 2. This is simple difference of 2 squared. Now the next step I have written 1 over v minus 1 over v plus 2. Now if you look at it, when you simplify this, this will go up. So this will become v plus 2 minus v. So the v gets cancelled. So you have 2. This, the next step, if you want to write the next step, ignore this, would be 2 over v times v plus 2. Now to counter this 2, I'll put a 1 over 2 here. So this is, so we have, we are writing in this form because we know the integration of 1 over v and we also know the integration of 1 over v plus 2 because integration of 1 over x dx is natural log of x plus c of course. So here this is half times natural log of v minus natural log of v plus 2 plus c. So that is ultimately one half natural log of v over v plus 2. So let me go back. So we had reached here. So after this step, we can directly write the next step, which is uh, one half, one half times natural log of v plus v over v plus 2 is equal to natural log of x. Uh, now this c I have written as natural log of b. This is an arbitrary constant, so that constant has to be log of some number. That's again an arbitrary, this is not an arbitrary number, so the c is a constant. You can write that as a log for, as a log of a number, so that's why I've written log b. There's a reason why I'm writing log b there. Okay, so what's the next step? The next step is simple. I'm multiplying each term by 2. So I'm multiplying this by 2 to get rid of this 2. So I multiply this by 2 and this by 2. So this is, now you're adding 2 natural log of x to both sides. So if you add 2 natural log of x to this side, you have to add 2 natural log of x to this side. So this and this gets cancelled. So this becomes... 2 natural log of x is same as natural log of x squared. So natural log of, now applying the log rule, I think you can understand the next step, is vx squared over v plus 2. And applying the log rule, this is log of b squared, which is again log of k, a new constant. So now, this is a very easy form, natural log of vx over v plus 2 is natural log of v. So the natural log are on both sides. So we can write now vx modulus of vx squared of v of v plus 2 is equal to k. Okay, so now what will happen, now we're going to substitute v 
as y over x. So I'm not cancelling this x here because this is this becomes if you want to do the next step this is uh, x squared y over x over y plus 2x over x and that's why the x gets cancelled in the next step. So this is x squared y. I hope you understand this step. This is very blur, very dark. I think I'll use a lighter color. So the next step, for those who want to understand the next step, this, I'm not cancelling the x with this x squared. I can write this. Oops. I wanted to use a lighter color. Let me use white. So the next step, if you want to write, this is y x squared over x the whole thing over uh, the this will become y, y plus 2x over x so this is this x and this x gets cancelled and that's why I can write x squared y over y plus 2x is equal to k okay so now if you put we we have been given that when x is 1 y is 1 so we are going to put the that those values here so putting x is equal to 1 and y is equal to 1 this becomes 1 and this becomes 3 so k is uh, modulus of 1 over 3 uh, you can write k is equal to 1 third now when you remove the modulus so we can write modulus this, this is one third okay so when you remove the modulus you have to put plus or minus one third okay because you know if modulus of x is phi x can be plus or minus phi because modulus of plus phi is phi and modulus of negative phi is also phi so if modulus of something is one third i can write if i remove the modulus i have to put plus or minus so cross multiplying i can write 3x squared y is plus or minus y plus 2x so let me remove this now but when you when when x is 1 and y is 1 it cannot be negative because if you put 1 and 1 on the left hand side this will become 3 but if you have a negative here this will become negative 3 so you can't have 3 is equal to negative 3 so for this given condition this negative would not work so we can accept only one of the condition that is x 3x uh, 3x squared y is equal to y plus 2x and then making y the subject i think you can this is not that difficult y is equal to 2x over 3x squared minus 1. now the denominator cannot be zero so you have to specify that it cannot be zero and what does that mean that means x squared cannot be one third or in other words x cannot be plus or minus one over root three so the solution is so the required solution is y is equal to y is equal to two x not one i made a mistake here it should be y is equal to two x over three x squared minus one is the required solution such that x cannot be plus or minus one over root three